If only one out of every six American children attends summer camp programs, that means there's a whole lot of potential campers out there just waiting for you to create a new day camp close by their neighborhoods. So now what? How do you go from that great little idea to a fully functioning day camp that's signing up campers, hiring staff, and getting ready for opening day? Stay tuned and we'll let you know. This is the Day Camp Podcast. Welcome back, my friends, to the Day Camp Pod. I'm Andy Pritikin, Director of Liberty Lake in the Philly suburbs of New Jersey. I'm Sam Thompson from Crystal Lake Park District, Crystal Lake, Illinois. I am Tiffany Gratton from Purposeful Play in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we are here to broaden your horizons as camp professionals, as day camp professionals. And the topic today, um, which we got, you know, we thought about it. Uh, it was on our big list of topics, but then we actually got an email. That's right. You can email us through our website, daycamppodcast.com, from a fella named Kerry Klug, who is the Recreation Program Coordinator in Passaic County, uh, New Jersey Parks and Rec office. Um, I spoke to the New Jersey Parks and Rec folks a few weeks ago at the Turtleback Zoo, um, my childhood happy place. And, um, and anyway, he sent us a thing like, how do you start a camp program? And he's talking about a rec program. But you know, starting any kind of program, um, I know that a lot of people probably don't even know where to begin. And whether it's a nonprofit or a for profit or a big thing or a little thing or whatever, there are some concepts in there that um, that I'd like to go over and I think that we can cover and I think we're really fortunate because uh, Sam was at the beginning of her um, when when her thing started what was that 1984 Sam. That's pretty impressive. And, and Tiff started her own place and I've started Liberty Lake and I helped start Everwood day camp and, and another uh, place too, a resident camp too. So um, so I think we can get down to some, um, some nitty gritty here for you all. So, so I don't know, Tiff, you're, you're com I'm going to, I'm going to lean on you. I told you this because Tiff is relocating her, 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 uh, her program from Milwaukee to Chicago. So I'm just going to use you as an example. So here you are, come moseying into Chicago. Now, what's the first thing that, that you're going to do to get it going, to get it rolling? So for me, the first thing is always to just determine like the best location where, um, where, what, who has the space, who has the indoor and outdoor space, where can we put this program and who needs it? So kind of just to do a needs assessment of the community. Honestly, you know, I, I have an independent camp, so I'm not doing it for a park district. So I start with where I want to be you know, like what neighborhoods and, and areas I feel like I'll be comfortable in and where I feel like I can make the most impact. And, and usually um, that's my space. I'm scouting out locations and parks and, and just trying to put the puzzle pieces together of how I can make that thing work. I would say that's the first step. Right. So people ask me, they say, so Andy, you should start a camp outside of Atlanta or outside of Seattle or whatever. And they're like, what do you need? What do you need to start a camp? And I really don't think that it needs to be such a cookie cutter thing. Cause like you said, it could be a bunch of different things, right? You, you're using buildings, you're using schools, you're using parks, right? So it, it's not like the white picket fence thing. Well, oh, it's gotta have a pool and it's gotta have a minimum of five acres. It's got, uh, uh Like camp can be anything, right? Yeah. Camp is about the relationships that happen. Absolutely. That place, right? Yeah, I think um, you just needs to be really open-minded and know that People are making camps of all sorts of things. It's not the traditional model where you have to have five acres. You know, I started my first camp. Literally, I call myself the accidental camp director. It started with five kids in my backyard. It got too small. We moved to a park and we made it, you know, more public. Mm -hmm. And we were able to use that space. And we literally collaborated with community organizations across Milwaukee, from the Urban Ecology Center to the YMCA's to kind of lend, you know, their best practices. And along the way, we, we um, you know, stumbled upon our own secret sauce. So whether it's looking at a local park, looking at a building that's being underutilized, um, access to safe recreation, especially in urban cities, is, you know, needed everywhere. And kids always need mentors. So I think just knowing that you embrace that camp spirit and that you want to create impact for kids, like one, your why and that being your why or whatever your personal motivation for starting the camp is trumps all the other things. You know, you can figure out where to put it, what the state's rules are, 
um, how to do your programming. There, there are resources uh, bountiful right. out there on how to do the thing. I think right. it just starts right. with knowing it's something that you want to do. Yeah, those are secondary. I agree. And, um, you know, for those people who actually want to look like the quintessential kind of camp things, you know, just something to be looking for out there. There's lots of Girl Scout and Boy Scout camps that have been going on for years that will close down over the years that are, you know, and those, those organizations are looking to recoup some money from these places. So finding those places, you know, um, back in, you know, day camps didn't used to be, you know, as prevalent as they used, as, as, as it is now, it used to be a resident camp thing. So where are those resident camps that have closed down over the years and where are they sitting dormant, you know, and finding those places. I've seen a lot of great day camps emerge from dormant rec resident camp facilities. Um, so, you know, part of the, 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 the location aspect that we're talking about is be, people being able to access it too, right? So how are people going to be able to walk there, ride their bikes there, drive there? Is it off of any main roads, right? Um, you know, it's great being close to a center of population. There's no doubt about it. But it's also sometimes harder to be in the middle of that. Sometimes it's easier to be on the outskirts. But if it's going to be on the outskirts, how are they going to get there? And all those kind of things too. So these are these are definitely factors you got to think of. Also, um, I know what, when I was starting out, um, one of the things, and I'm sure Tiff understands this big time, is like that whole going back to Jonathan Gold's kind of like making sure there's gas in the tank, and and making sure that you have the money to make it from this creation point until opening day, kind of thing. And and so so how are you? You you know if you're renting the place. Is, is the people you're renting from going to be able to sort of hold off on getting those rent payments until you have some capital, you know? Um, if you're purchasing uh, something, is the bank going to be able to work with you and that kind of thing too? You just don't want to find yourself getting a month or two away from camp start and then being out of money when you need it most at that point. So, yeah. you know, so, so to me, the most important thing is, you know, coming up with a cool name, getting the URL, right? Get your Facebook and Instagram all ready to go, you know, and, and start signing people up as soon as you can, right? Because you need some revenue. Even if you're only taking $100, $200 deposits, they can add up. And then all of a sudden you can have a bank account with $5,000 in it and then you can start doing something. I, I totally agree. I mean, it's all about pre-selling the vision. Like once you have, I mean, you got to have a cool name, like you said, you know, mm. the, it, all, it, all, it, it starts and ends with a cool name, but <laughs> Um, you know that you you can't people are just fun people anybody that's thinking of starting or owning a camp like we're fun by nature I think it's really important for us to remember that we're not only starting a camp but it is a business so we're starting a company so even if you don't want to um, go through the rigor of a full-blown business plan just having like that I think there's a lean model canvas that people can use to just kind of sketch some of their ideas on how they will you know, maintain and what, how they will generate revenue. And so I think you hit it right on the head, just putting the idea out there, having the URL, being social. Um, parents, especially in the age of this pandemic, need help. And one really cool thing about camps, um, whether they run year round or just in the summer, we are considered an essential service because at the root of it all, we care for children. And so there is a need for it. And I think that when people are um, considering starting any type of business, you want to make sure that viability, you know, that it can last. And so camps are uniquely positioned to not only provide the fun and the um, social emotional skills, but also just basic child care needs, the, the yeah. parents need a safe place for their kids to go. And, you know, we meet that mark. So definitely um, getting the URL and putting it out there and pre-selling the vision so that you can, you know, actually make that thing come to fruition. Right. And, you know, a lot of people listening to this podcast are camp people. Right. And, you know, I started my camp in a place where there are no camp people here. Tiff deals with an audience of people who many of them it's their first time ever going to anything called camp. Right. So so getting to the essence of like, what do people need? Like that's business 101. Like what need are you fulfilling? And, you know, I tell day camp people all the time, do not shy away from the child care thing. That's your number one need being fulfilled right there. And so people go to work. For Kerry being in park districts, um, if he's got people above him that maybe are skeptical about starting camp at their district, um, he has to do um, a survey of the population too and get the people above him uh, on board that 
this is an important thing that we're offering. Like Tiff was saying, it, it is important, but convincing the people above you. And also um, schools are can be intergovernmental agreement um, uh, places, locations to have your camp. So if you can get them on board that we're serving the same population and we're both taxing bodies um, for carry, that that might be the important part for a park district person. Yeah, and for recreation departments and YMCAs and JCCs and organizations like that, these bigger kind of organizations, you know, very often their summer camp programs end up being 20, 30, 40, 50% of their revenue, right? Because you can make a you can make a decent chunk of change pretty quickly for summer camp, so that that is part of the proposition for convincing the decision makers, right? In those kind of situations, um, in regards to being a nonprofit versus a profit, are you a nonprofit, Tiff? Purposeful play. So purposeful play is for profit for purpose. That's our, mm -hmm. our tagline. Um, but we do have a nonprofit. It's called Play University, and we really use that as a space to like teach the teachers, coach the coaches. Um, kind of like a, a training model and also to get some scholarship dollars for kids whose families might not be able to afford to participate. So um, like my accountant friends and, and I really decided to like a hybrid model worked best for us so that we could suit all of the needs. Um, for me, it was really important coming from a business background to have control of my revenue. I didn't mm -hmm. want when you when you own something nonprofit, the um, you just take a salary and you you can't you know live off the fruits of the revenue and, and you can you can get voted off the island too. So there is a way. <laughs> you, if you start your own nonprofit, you can write into your articles of incorporation that the president, the founder, can can never be voted off unless That's there's some sort of illegal act. But there that absolutely that that was one of my main concerns like i can't create this thing and it's my baby and then you vote me off the I, like no that doesn't get to happen so mm -hmm. um I, I was uh very well prepared by my nonprofit attorneys to to figure out how to write that in so that you can't be voted off the island unless you do something that is really illegal but um but just those considerations, I mean, that's another thing that people should consider when they are looking towards opening camps. I know tons of people in the Milwaukee area who start nonprofits because it seems like the cool thing to do or, you know, like, oh, we're going to get grant funding. But grant funding is really, really competitive. And sometimes you're better off just, you know, using a for profit model. Um, the other thing I would say that people should really consider is just like your core values. You mentioned how people shy away from the child care um, aspect. Honestly, during that having um being licensed by the department of children and family is one of the things that maintained steady revenue for us so we always knew that that money was coming in and then all of our um personal promotions or marketing campaigns were just like icing on the cake for that so um it's not nothing to be shied away from and again that is what made camp essential and able to run during this during the pandemic the fact that we you know did care for children and so I think our mission was to empower children, um, to empower children, support families, and build a community using the power of play and athletics. And so starting off, we were like really annoyed if people said, oh, that's daycare. Oh, that's daycare. Because we're like, we're not daycare. We're pushing social emotional education. We're, you know, exposure and, these, you know, all these things. But at the end of the day, um, children having a safe place to be and learn and grow is, is at the pit of everything that we're doing. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that hybrid thing is very interesting. I, I just want to I want to dig into that just a little bit more. So, so the the positives of of having a private business, like Tiff is saying, is that you're calling your own shots, right? You're your own boss, and that's great to wake up in the morning and and say I'm coming in an hour later, and who cares, and all that kind of thing. I mean, you're, that's nice for many reasons, being your own boss and not having to answer to some people and all that, right? Um, but then it does go through to your taxes. And then, you know, like there, there's, there's positives and negatives. Although I gotta say the biggest positive of being your own boss also is being able to write things off as business expenses. Because if, you know, once this business becomes your life then pretty much everything gets, can get written off which is a wonderful, wonderful advantage. Um, but the advantage of the not-for-profits which Tiff touched on is being able to get grant money you know, because you can't do that as a private business. And also um, just being accepted by the local community more. When you're a nonprofit, they seem to embrace you more 
because you, they don't, because they think if you're a private business, you're just out to make money. But if you're a nonprofit, oh, and, and you heard Tiff's, you know, her, her mission statement is amazing. It sounds just like a nonprofit and, and mine is similar too, but I do get resistance from schools and communities and stuff when the, when the first thing they say is that you're a nonprofit. I say, no. And, and, but like Tiff said, I did start a, a uh, not-for-profit also. So we have the Liberty Lake Foundation too. So it's nice to be able to have two, to be able to be able to flip flop and be able to, you know, use the advantages of both. So I, I think that's a really cool idea to do. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that it um, allows you the, the fluidity to be able to move between the two and to use them um, within the guidelines of what your nonprofit is set up to do. To, to really optimize the best of both worlds. And um, I think so for people who don't want to deal with nonprofits at all, there is a way that you can get some funding if you, you just have, you can approach companies as long as your mission jives with what they're looking to do, they can write it off as marketing. And so there is a little bit of a caveat around that. So I know for us, um, Harley Davidson has had a foundation and they were huge in the Milwaukee area and they have supported our efforts and we just like smack Harley all over everything and they can still write it off, you know, in their marketing as well as that's been a really cool way for us to get support from local businesses, um, restaurants or whomever may have supported us over the years, just being able to write that off as marketing for them. So that's a little bit of a accounting trick around, you know, still being able mm -hmm. to the funds. Be as good as Tiff at selling it. That's what I think too. You gotta, it's not, you know, seriously, like people might see it on face value and be like, mm -mm, but you got to sell it, you know, and, and show them they know how it works to their advantage. And if you have a camp full of parents, I mean, who could oblige those businesses, then it shouldn't really be a hard tip. I guess more so than selling it, I think you got to believe it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, you gotta, like if once you believe it, then you can convince the, you know, the rest of the world that it's a thing. So if you're like, ah, well, but if you, if you, you believe it and you know it to be true, you know, the local businesses, definitely when my parents saw that, you know, on some of our gear or something else, they would go to those businesses they typically wouldn't go to. So it is, it's certainly giving them a, um, a, a look. A new right, so story. We had our marketing department was getting sponsors for our t-shirts and putting them on the back of our t-shirts. And I don't know what they were thinking, but one summer they put a funeral home on the back of our t-shirts. So you got to be careful what message your, your vendors based. are saying. Community based. <laughs> Come on, that's fine. So, so, uh, so let's back up a little bit. So, so we got the cool name now. Okay. We got a location hopefully that we think is going to work out. Okay. We got a URL so we can make a website. Right. And now I want you guys all to just, to just really appreciate the fact that this is 2020, 2021. Right. And, and, you know, 20 years ago when I was starting my camp and, and, you know, websites were just like just starting and things like it was all about mass mail and magazine ads and newspaper ads and billboards. And like, it was all that brick and mortar kind of stuff. And now you can make a website for like nothing, you know, and, and have a URL and it cost, you're, you're talking about $20, $50, $100, like, and, and it's out there, out there in the world for everybody to see. And you could make a professional looking website, you know, with real simple navigation that just tells people what they need to know with photos from your friends camps or stock photos, <laughs> right? That make it look professional. And, 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 and you know, just remember, like our friend Twigs, who, who was literally running a camp in Nashville from a boat in the Puget Sound in Seattle, right? Because of technology, because of, of, of what's out there at your fingertips. So, so we live in a really cool time that we can keep costs down, those initial startup costs by making it happen like that, right? And so, so besides your regular website, which is, you know, super important. I mean, the, the website is now the yellow pages of, of today. Right. That's how people find things is they're going to Google it or whatever it, you know, online and they're going to find you that way. It's so important that if, if, if you don't do this on your own, that you make sure you have somebody that understands websites you do it with. So that you have the right keywords in there. So when people are searching for you, you pop up in, in those searches. It's so, so important. And, and it's important to, to make it sound good what you're doing and all. Okay. You got to be selling, right. But not to overpromise either because you don't want to come off on your first year and you're like, Oh, wait a second. It's on your website. You're going to do this, right. There's plenty you can write about and talk about without having to do that. The important thing is what Tiff was saying before is what is the essence of your camp? What is your vision 
that is the important thing. And in this day and age, especially with the pandemic and all, like that's all people need. That's all people want. You know, I was on a Zoom call with some people out in the wake uh, programs out there um, in California. And one of the camp directors was saying how they are literally stripping down all their marketing materials to take out all of the bells and whistles and stuff they had in there to just bring it to the essence because they've decided like that's what's important right now that's what people want to hear that's what they want to purchase that's what they want their kids doing in the summer okay they don't need to know that they're getting 29 of this and 15 of that and the air conditioning and no 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 no. they're gonna be playing with children <laughs> Literally, like that, that they're gonna in real life, lol. Like everyone is writing lol. Like, but when was the last time you laughed out loud? And kids are like overdosing on tablets and technology these days. And so, just getting them back to like learning how to play again. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also important to note to mention like um, camps can be from from anything. So I have friends who teach art classes who are opening art camps. I have friends with dance camps. I have friends with photography camps. So if you're just like, you know, I don't want to run a full blown camp, you can run a specialty camp and parents will, you know, will oblige to that as well. I think it's really important that we align um, what we're what we're teaching with the interests and abilities of the of the children. And right now, every kid really just wants to commune with people. You know what I mean? If you've listened to any of the previous episodes where we talked about how we've been able to keep kids socially distanced and safe. I mean, if you just sell that point where you are able to host a camp that keeps kids socially distanced and safe, they're having fun, you know, they're learning life skills that they don't get taught in school. Um, you know, it's gold, you know, honestly, now is a time like no other. I think that parents are being shown you know, education beyond the school walls is so paramount. And um, literally, leadership, conflict resolution, there's no, there's no class for that. You know, there's no app for that. So we can do it. Right. So here you got your website now. And it says, click here for more information. Click here to register and all that kind of stuff. Again, it's 2020. Like you could literally build this through Google Forms. You could literally, like, you, you do not need to have some sophisticated, look, I love Campminder. I am one of their, their, their biggest shillers out there, okay? You do not need Campminder to start a camp, okay? You can do this relatively simple. What, what registration uh, stuff do you use, Tiff? Oh, sorry, guys, I got okay. for a second. Um, I actually use, I started with Jotform, which is, mm -hmm. they posted um, oh, yeah. some stuff now. So I started with Jotform for my registration. It works really easy, seamless. You can actually get a free account if you don't care about the branding. Um, but now I use a system called Kartra and it, it's because I'm all fancy with my marketing now. So it has all the bells and whistles for email marketing and all of, of these systems that, that do all these fancy behind the scene things. But literally starting with Jotform was free and easy. You write the questions that you need to have and you keep it moving. The other thing I think might be important is to um, just understand the licensing regulations from uh, for your state. It varies by state. So it's not like you can just go out and just open a camp. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need um, approval from the Department of Children and Families. Sometimes you need, um, you know, different, every state requires something different. So just to be sure to check that out. And yeah. you want a quality control oversight of some form, whether it's ACA standards, whether it's DCFS, whether it's the health department in your state, um, parents feel more confident when they see that you're you're asking people in to take a look at what you're doing and to help yeah. you. Well, with you that. won't be able to run if you don't. So that would be yeah. really important, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, so um, so we talked about the website, but now you know again it's 2020. So you know you need a Facebook page, a Facebook. Um, what's it call it, um, you know, business page, you need an Instagram page, you know, these are easy, no brainer, simple things that you, that you got to get going in, in this age, if you want to compete with everybody and get the word out cheaply and easily, right. And when you make Facebook boosts, you know, we've talked about this before, you could do them for relatively cheap. You know, once you get a whole bunch of people following you, then you can start, um, you know, then you could just start boosting and you're marketing to the friends of the friends and all that kind of thing too. And the same thing with Instagram, right? And then, you know, on top of that, um, you know, you could, you could just really use social media to your advantage. And, um, you know, I suggest you all follow my friend Tiff McDuffie 
on social media through her Instagram and her Facebook because she does a, an unbelievable job um, with her She Plays, you know, um, initiative and, and her personal play stuff. Um, and now she's making TikTok videos, you know, and she's old like me and she's pulling it off, which I'm super impressed with. <laughs> It's so funny because literally, you know, in in the in back in our day, we'd have to like run a newspaper ad and like you yeah. said, go play flyers That's what I'm saying. Everywhere. That's what I'm saying. You know, really are, and and don't get me wrong, I do a mix of all those things, right? But social media is there, is there for the taking. It's free. That doesn't mean your engagement is gonna be up, but you can like join groups of like minded people or parenting groups where they're just looking for resources and throw it in there. And if you want to get the kids' attention, yeah, you gotta kind of you gotta stay relevant and try to be cool. So that here enters uh, Coach Tiff doing these TikTok videos where I'm not quite sure I look cool, but <laughs> but Andy says I does. And hey, it, it tends to resonate and it makes you know it makes you relatable to the kids. And I think that 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 is just so very important. Yeah, and and it doesn't have to be you. Whoever's listening to this right here, you got to find someone in your organization that has that cult of personality, that has that 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 affinity towards technology and and whatever. You know, you want the person in in your that's going to be at your camp. That's the person that's standing on the picnic tables or whatever. You know, that's getting people all riled up. Get them to be the ones that are doing it. it does not have to be the main you know director person who might be you know you might be more of an operational like behind the scenes person, right? I mean, anyway. I, I literally have a campaign that I talk about when I do She Plays because that that She Plays is basically like camp for women. Like mm -hmm. we forget to play and so th there it is. But um, it's called You Can Have It All If You Don't Do It All. So you got to stick to your zone of genius, right? Like do the things that light you up and, and, and ask for help for all of the rest. So personally, I have kids. I have an 11 year old and twin girls that are eight. And so I gotta, I gotta let them know that I am cool and I am relevant. I can beat them in all things, including TikTok videos. <laughs> but um, like Andy said, absolutely find someone else. You, you'd be amazed at um, the help that you can get by just asking. Even you know, especially if you're camp people, you know, look to, to other staff who um, have, who are really excited and are looking for work beyond the summer season to help you, you know, do some of that marketing thing because they know camp. And, and literally when you talk about the magic of camp and starting a new one, you know, it's transferable from, from, um, camp to camp. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it may have taken 12 hours of Tiff life to put that TikTok video together. I don't know, but it was free. <laughs> In the end, it did cost a cent. <laughs> and it's so funny because even even on the last one, I'm still offbeat. So I'm just like, done is better than perfect. So maybe that's another piece of advice for people who are real. Like, done is better than perfect. So pick your location, find your URL. People are like, how do you find a URL? Go to GoDaddy.com. Like it's it's mm -hmm. it's simple. Um, and and just start find your location, find your URL everything is really rooted in your purpose, your why, your values, and what you're trying to deliver, and just authentically speak to that. When you do that, you know, the, the children will come. Oh, like Sam said, too, about the aligning with schools, that is such a great idea, and that's something that we did with Purposeful Play a lot, because they already have the kids, right? They already have the kids. They have a need. There's so much um, research out there about out of the need for kids being able to have safe access to recreation during out of school times. And so it, it's like a jackpot. I think that's great. Sam. Yes, we're going to hit on that in a second. But first, I want to talk about my friends at AM Skyer. All right. And, and Sam, what is our AM Skyer topic of the day? AM Skyer topic <laughs> is talking um, timely talk it session. Is timely talks. So, so you know, AM Skyer has found, you know, some of the best camps in the country are AM Skyer clients, and they find the camp directors at these camps to do these little, uh, like, five-minute interviews. These They call them timely talks. And, and so, you know, it's really, really interesting, you know, hearing about, you know, how people feel about what they do and how they got into it and all. And some of the most renowned camp directors, in, like I said, in the world who are, you know, in, a, in the United States and Canada. Um, so, yeah, timely talks uh, is a pretty cool thing if you follow AM Skyer on social media, you'll see it all over the place. And, um, you know, the AM Skyer community, just like a lot of these kind of um, organizations, 
um, you know, you sharing best practices. That that's one of the benefits of of just like being on this, listening to the Day Camp podcast. You know, uh, when you're at AM Sky, are you getting the best, um, you know, legal advice and PR, and um, and medical advice and and such? Um, because remember, they're brokers, right? So what they do is they go out and find the best. That is, that is their job. So AM Skyer celebrating over a hundred years now. All right. Check them out. AMSkyer.com. All right. All right. So back, I want to, I want to continue on uh, what we were talking about with the schools, right? Because part of, of your success in your new program is ingratiating yourself with the local community, right? You want to be a community partner. Okay, not this, not this carpetbagger coming in from Milwaukee that wants to just like all of a sudden start, you know, taking all the Chicago kids away from all the people that had them, right? So, um, so, so it's, it's the schools, it's the churches and the synagogues, right? It's aligning yourself with the rec programs, right? You want, you want to be doing things for the fire department, whoever, right? So, so Tiff, you're coming to town, okay? You choose this little block. This is where you guys are going to be at, right over here, right? So how are you going to sort of start making inroads now for, with the local schools? So I'm from Chicago, so that is helpful for me. And mm -hmm. the, the location of the new camp is right around my high school. So I kind of have inroads already. But if you are coming to a new space, I think exactly those things that you said you have to do your research to figure out what's going on in that community. And, and you know, one misnomer when you say like coming in and taking all the kids, there's so many kids. Yes. You can never take all of the kids. <laughs> so for, for people who, you know, I think that it's, it's interesting how people look at one another as competition all the time instead of collaboration. Had it not been for the YMCA in Milwaukee or for the Urban Ecology Center, I wouldn't have a camp. They provided a space. They, I mean, literally... Even when you encounter people who are looking at you like competition, um, I would just help them be more open-minded about it or just go and ask the next person. But anyway, you come in, you, um, so what, one of the things that we've done is to get with the local grammar schools and just let them know that we're there. Sometimes it's just very much about awareness. Um, I belong to a few Facebook groups, so Chicago Mom Squad and um, mom, Moms of Sports Kids. So literally just going out and searching the web for um, people in your local area who have the interest in what you're doing. And if you do like a Google search on like the pain point that you feel like you are solving. So for us, we need it. We, we like kids are overdosing on tablets and technology. We want kids to be active. And so when you when you do those types of searches, you'll see um, all sorts of books and other things come up where parents like it'll lead you to Amazon. I'm going back and forth a little bit, but it'll lead you to Amazon. And on Amazon, you'll see those books that are about getting kids active or getting kids moving or getting kids off of technology. And when you look at the reviews, there are moms who have given reviews on those books and they are speaking their pain points. They're telling you left and right what's wrong, what they want you to fix. So they're giving you the language that you need to use. So if you're ever struggling with like, how do I really communicate what we do? How do I communicate the value of that? Um, you So in a way that the end user or your ultimate customer is listening, moms are notorious for going out on the internet and complaining about what's wrong. So um, they're giving you the, you know, the, the, the right words to use right back at them. And when you're able to really solve those things, I mean, it's a win-win. Yeah. Now uh, you hit on a lot of really great points there. Uh, the first one is yes, Tiff, there are plenty of kids out there. And, you know, you think about how many kids go to that elementary school on the corner over there. Right. I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds of kids just at that school right there. And then there's another one a few blocks away. So, yeah, you're talking about in any one area that you could have your camp. There are literally tens of thousands of kids that could potentially come to you. Right. So, yes, that's an important point. Um, but when you are a new camp, like Tiff was also insinuating, like there are people that are going to be like, oh, who's this person that coming and going to take, you know, so making good inroads with people, you know, I think it is making good relationships. And like she said, just like, let them know that you exist, you know, don't let it be a surprise that one day it just pops up. So, you know, we talked about back in the day, all the, all the mailings that you had to send out and all the newspaper ads and all that kind of thing. And then Tiff hit on like this major key, which is now these moms, they like yenting it up online in these little kindred Facebook groups, right? It's just, that is the thing. And they're hyper local, right? So it's like literally name a neighborhood and there's a Facebook mom's group for that neighborhood. And that's where they are, 
<laughs> that's where they're at. And that's where they're voicing their opinions. And just like, you know, anything you do on social media, you can't just be selling or they're just going to shut you off. Right. It's got, they, it's, it's got to be about you and it's got to be like what you can offer the community, you know? One thing that school districts are looking for, they have a requirement from the State Board of Education to provide something in the out of school time. And they don't wanna create all of that on their own. Um, so partnering with camps and with after school programs is a necessity for them. You're taking one of the things that they have to do and doing it for them. That is a great point. That is so true. I think that's a national thing. Um, so one of the ways that I, sort of, and we've talked about this before in, in prior uh, podcast episodes. And one way that I've ingratiated myself with these uh, schools is by saying, you know, what can I do for you? Like, do you do fundraisers? Like, you know, like, oh yeah, well our PTO, we do, a, you know, two things or three things throughout the year. And we always look for sponsors and it's like, well, I got no money. So that's not going to happen. All right. But <laughs> I will give you a certificate. I'll give you two certificates for a free week of camp that you can auction off at your thing. And yeah, your camp hasn't even run yet, but that's not important, okay? <laughs> What's important is you're giving them free camp, all right? You have to barter with what you got. And what you got, it may, be, it may still be in dream mode, but you can give them, give them two weeks free. Give them a whole summer of free camp, okay? You're starting with zero kids, okay? Having one extra kid ain't gonna kill you, especially if it's in a school, there's, you know, a school that is really important school in, in this neighborhood right? So give up, don't be, you know, don't be shy, you know, get, be generous in, in what you give to these folks, because they will take it and they will run for it. And, um, you know, personally, like, like, if I have some staff that are available, um, and in this COVID situation with all the college students sitting home, you know, in their bedrooms doing college, like they're available, like we could show up at these things and we can do face painting and we can play games. We can do socially distanced games. We, we can do stuff that will enhance their events, right? And if you actually have a facility that you're not renting, then you can actually bring them out to your place for free. You know, just get them to come to your place. And you, you, you just, if what you do is great and you are great at it, then you just have to find ways to get people to see it in action. Yeah, I think that collaboration is king. Like, it, like you both just mentioned, just like going to the schools and offering yourself up as a resource. Don't go in with the attitude of, oh, I'm asking them to do something for me, but more so, this is how we can partner. This is what I can add. And that goes back to, again, understanding the pain points, not just of the parents, but of the schools. Trust that parents are asking the schools, oh my gosh, you all are closed again. Oh my gosh, you all are, you know, parents need help and they're going to the schools. So, what is the pain point that the school can provide? Well, they have this resource, your XYZ camp, new to the neighborhood, but here to help you know kids stay active, have fun, um, be a resource to parents and all of those things. And just you know, knowing that you're, you are giving value. And like Andy said, you can't just go into the groups and say, hey, register here or pay me now. But if you <laughs> go in and you say, you know, you, you read the comments and, and you can do it very, um, very authentically, like just by answering some of the questions or, you know, giving your response to some of the pain points that the parents are saying that they have. And, you know, we, we can do that. Camp solves so many ills, just like kids who aren't being thankful, kids who aren't being gracious, kids who aren't practicing leadership, kids who can't um, resolve conflict. Like those are all things that we teach, you know, very intuitively at camp through games and fun ways that kids are willing to listen to. There's no class for that, you know, and, and sometimes kids don't want to hear their parents, you know, balking down the ear about why they should be nice. But when they see it in action, um, literally, we had kids at Purposeful Play who's who had behavior problems at school who needed like behavioral interventions. And those principals and those deans were like excited to say, oh, I'm going to tell Coach Tiff that you're not, you know, that you're not getting it done. And that, and that would help them straighten out. So literally recognizing that you having a camp, hosting a camp is a benefit and a resource to the community. Yep. So like we've been saying, childcare, that's, that's a no brainer. That's the low hanging fruit. And then like Tis been saying, like even before the pandemic, we were complaining about getting kids off electronics, right? Kids need 21st century skills to be ready for, to, so they go to college and they don't drop out their freshman year. So they get their first job, right? And they need to stay in shape. Physical fitness is good for your mind, your body, your soul, right? Social skills, soft skills. Like this is what we do. We solve so many pain points in modern society for children right now. We are literally, we are like the remedy, you know? 
Um, it's like I love it. Like this hashtag, <laughs> this is what we do. Hashtag yeah. is the remedy. Yeah, you know, and, and never a better time. So honestly, this is people may think like, oh my gosh, but I shouldn't start a camp during the the pandemic. It is literally the best time to start, and it, it gives you a, a you're immediately solving a problem that we know exists. And now, unlike any other time. Kids are finally sick of technology. Kids want to move their bodies. You know, kids want to see, you know, make real friends in real life and not just off of likes on social media. So, um, you know, you may have to, to spice it up a little bit to, to truly get them involved. But kids are built to move, you know, and so we provide that. Yep. All right. That was awesome. We got to keep boogieing and uh, go to our camp tip of the week. But first, I want to talk about CRS and their, what is it called, Sam? The Mothership. The Mothership. <laughs> and the Mothership is a giant SUP, which is a stand up, um, what is it called? It's, a, it's one of them big boards you stand on, right? Paddle board. It's a paddle board, a stand up paddle board, right? And, and um, you know, the mothership can fit like 15 kids, but you know, you want to socially distance, you could have less, of course. But um, these stand up paddle boards, I, I know the, the CRS ones are inflatable, which makes it easy for storage, which is really nice. Make sure you store them in a nice warm place over the year. Don't keep them outside though. Um, but yeah, we, we have a similar kind of thing at my camp and the kids go out on the lake and, or you can do it in a pool and it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's a great team building thing. You try to, you get a dozen kids standing on a paddle board with, with paddle board things in their hands, trying to move it around. Let me tell you, that is team building at its best. No doubt about it. So CRS, um, one of the greatest, you know, commercial recreation uh, specialists, our, our proud sponsor. They're at all the conferences. They'll be at the virtual conferences this year. Uh, shout out to my man, Rich Wills, who, uh, who unfortunately can't be traveling around the country like he normally is right now. And he's sitting home, hopefully listening to this. But uh, thank you, CRS, for all your support that you do with the American Camp Association and the Day Camp Pod. All right. So my Day Camp Tip of the Week relates to the last thing we were talking about, like what can you offer people, right? And one of the products, if you go to the national conference, uh, ACA national conference, tri-state camp conference, there's usually um, a vendor there selling portable Gaga courts, right? I cannot tell you how awesome these portable Gaga carts, port, uh, courts are for bringing to these kind of school events, right? Where you can, you know, augment an event, take an event that they were already doing, you know, it could be, I've done them at Christmas ones where they're doing these giant tricky tray things and then Santa's over in the corner. And then there I am outside with a portable Gaga court in 20 degree weather, you know, with like 50 kids that want to play Gaga. And it could be a blow up inflatable one. It, you can get plastic ones. You can, you could make wooden ones with hinges and stuff like that, that pull apart. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do these things. And, and the plastic ones, I mean, the, the inflatable ones, they can cost, you know, a thousand bucks, 1200 bucks. I'm telling you, it would be the best investment you make. 2,500 bucks, I think is the, the you want the top of the line one. Um, they're really, really great. Kids love them. Gaga, international sport that, that kids just love. So that's mine. Handing off to you, Sam. All right. Um, we have a, a Gaga pit that was created by an Eagle Scout. That was his final project. So it's oh, a handicap great. accessible one. And yeah, they absolutely love it. Um, one thing I wanted to tell Carrie, I was remiss in not saying my registration system is Vermont Systems Rec Track, which a lot of park districts use. Um, and the, I use Camp Docs for my emergency forms. I forgot to throw those out there. Um, my tip of the week is advertising in the winter. If you have programs going on during the winter or a before and after school program, or even if you're doing tours and handing out the t-shirts, um, every winter I give all of my staff um, shirts that just simply says, ask me about my awesome camp. <laughs> so uh, if you're giving them to kids, you can do follow me to whatever camp. Um, and if you're brand new and they haven't been there yet, uh, you're going to need to put a resource on there that they can call for more information. But um, if you want walking billboards, those work really well. Awesome. awesome. I love that tip. I, the first time I ever went to an uh, ACA conference and I saw a shirt that said, ask me about summer camp. I was just like, ah, this is genius. Um, <laughs> I have a funny paddleboard story too. It definitely would be team board, a team building because I've only ever paddleboarded alone. 
And I don't know that I would trust anybody else on my paddleboard. So that I'm going to challenge myself to get on one of those <laughs> this summer. I'm you gonna, could get I'm, your whole family on one. I tell oh, you, Tiff, they're big. They're really <laughs> big. They're like, they're, they're bigger than you think. Yeah. That is so funny. So since, um, I really want to give a fun tip, but the accountant in me is going to make me give a business tip. So if you're looking to start a camp, I want us to remember that camp is your company. It is a business. So I would encourage everyone to Google lean business canvas, lean canvas model so that you have a one page document that is kind of leading your efforts. And you can always go back to that to remember your why, to know how you're going to monetize, etc. And if you look at that and you're just like, I don't know what to put on here. I don't know how to answer these questions. Google Uber's lean canvas model. It just goes to show you that big companies are also filling these out. And theirs makes it so crystal clear on like how to answer the questions that you can relate it back to what you're doing. And yeah, go open a camp. Can you spell that? Because I'm trying to look it up and I'm having a little problem. The lean business canvas model? Yeah. Or Uber? No, lean? a lean, yeah. Lean, L-E-A-N. Yeah business canvas C -A -N. business business canvas i need to be more articulate <laughs> no i was looking at, i didn't get the business part yeah right, cool. model and it's just it's a one page document and you can throw everything in there it, it just makes you get really introspective and all of the big companies have them i like ubers because it speaks to two different audiences so if you want to be able to speak to parents and to schools Uber speaks to their drivers and their riders. And so I think, you know, whenever I'm coaching someone on how to open a camp or start any business, that's where I start. And um, I think it would be a really good resource for people looking to open a camp. All right, cool. I found leanplan.com too. There's lots of stuff out there. If you just put those words into Google, you get pages of stuff. So that's, that's good. Yeah, I'll, I'll find the link to the one that I like so we can maybe throw it in the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, so we want to thank Go, the Go Camp Pro team, including our new interns that we got. Shout out to them and our dedicated sponsors, AM Skyer and Commercial Recreation Specialists, for allowing us to bring this podcast to you. If you like what you hear, you should subscribe to the Day Camp Pod. Give us a nice rating while you're at it. Check out our show notes. Like Tiff says, if you want to see that link and other episodes at daycamppodcast.com, as well as contact info, so you can email us like our friend Carrie did. All right, and get some, uh, and Carrie, if you want to email Sam, her contact info is on there, as well as Tiff's, okay, and mine. So thanks for listening and making yourself a better day camp professional. We'll be back next week with a mini pod and in two weeks with Kim Acock and Jolly Corley talking about 2021 staff recruitment and retention. Thank you for listening to the Day Camp Pod. Thank you.